I know at the house we've been we've been uh, doing a lot to ensure the safety and we've been working very hard uh, to ensure the safety of this whistleblower. The President of the United States is threatening a whistleblower's life. This is authoritarian behavior and we have to recognize and see it for what it is. Thank you for stopping. Thank you, of course. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. It's not stopping the House's business. Mitch McConnell has been bragging all year that he's the graveyard for, for policies that pass out of the House. So I'm not concerned about us slowing down our business here in the House. Um, I find it humorous that they're acting now as though gun legislation is now going to be held up because of impeachment as if they haven't been um, sitting on HR 8 for several months now. So if they were, the Senate was actually being productive and, you know, being worth their 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 weight, but um, then I'd be concerned. But right now they haven't been doing a single, they haven't done a damn thing all year, and so, you know what? There's no leverage there in terms of their productivity. They haven't been doing anything. It's terrible. I mean, you compare previous uh, impeachment proceedings like Peter Rodino against Nixon, Henry Hyde against Clinton. It was really shameful and it really shows more of a lynch mob mentality than a quasi-judicial deliberative process. What do you think, think of the whistleblower's report? First of all, it's not really, a, a, to me, a whistleblower's report. This is like a compendium of the intelligence community and the national security apparatus going against President uh, 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 Trump. And the fact is that uh, he, he was not a witness to anything. So this is all second and third hand. It's like a guy doing a term paper or a thesis. I mean, he had no first-hand knowledge, wasn't on the call. Um, and the inspector general even told us that he had a bias against the president. So, I mean, he used the indicia of arguable political bias, which is fancy Washington talk for, this guy was out to get the president. So he's, his motivation, there's, there's questions there, his, and, and, and certainly didn't have any firsthand knowledge. And yet we're gonna, the Democrats are gonna move ahead with impeachment after reading that transcript? You, you, it's, it's just ridiculous. And then, of course, what Schiff did with his opening statement was ridiculous as well. And I, I take that oath of office incredibly seriously incredibly seriously and that's the way that this is going to go at no point though am i going to operate on your editor's deadlines at no point am i going to proceed with a false sense of urgency because at that point we will lose the american people as we again proceed in a clear fair and rational manner to get to the facts of what actually happened uh, and, and that's what i'm going to say to you and that's what I'm going to say to my constituents. And that message is not going to change. Because as much as you all want this to proceed as if it will be resolved tomorrow uh, at a reality TV show pace, this will take some time. And that is fair. And that is, that, that is the way that it should be. Thanks, guys. Thank you. A fair investigation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. He's an, he's an accomplished prosecutor. I think that he's talented, he's very thoughtful, he's very measured, he's very strategic, and he has a heart and a passion for seeking justice. I How think he's ultimately quali he's quali very qualified. How